Hello and welcome. Here we are again, the Marianne and Corinna duo. <laughs> still a duo. Still a duo. <laughs> we're still a duo. We have. We're not a uh, quadrant yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Having doubled. Yeah, not yet. Um, it's the first one in 2022. And in our conversation yesterday, uh, we were going about, yeah, what would we like to do personally, uh, et cetera, et cetera, in this new year. And what really came up when we looked for the theme of our conversation was that there is an intensity present when you start something new and it doesn't have to necessarily be the beginning of the year but uh it's just time wise fits yeah. that way and today it's marianne's turn to start us out here you go thank you karina you gave me the intensity of the new beginning <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it is indeed it is something that at least in my world during the holidays uh came more in the front of i took more as i would say a time off during those days which is not really mean that I'm sitting and not doing anything or checking out. No, I was really present with everything. But for myself, I chose to why draw me from the normal rush. Everyone goes in. Mm -hmm. And it was there that it started to... I got something more clear about intensity as people around me sp spoke and still are speaking of, oh, there is so much intensity and making that intensity wrong. While mm. for me, it was like, oh, but this intensity for me is an excitement of new beginnings yeah even though what is going on in the world is that related to a new beginning whatever it will be or is we don't know it yeah. and it was more that connotation of intensity is bad it's not done it's something you have to avoid and truly when we don't avoid an intensity, how much more ease we can have with birth of that new beginning, whatever it is. And that took me back to my, my own life when I gave birth to my children, especially the first one. I can remember, Karina, that came to a point that I said to the nurse, stop. I can't do it any longer. It, this has to stop. I'm giving it up. And she said, yeah, but just one more step, just one more press out, breathing out, and it's all over. And as a sudden, it was. It was. It is, it is something. The intensity of that new beginning is bringing us in a way to that point that it looks looks like I can't go on. I give up. It's enough. But it is in that moment that when you go on, something new is born. And yes, that intensity for me is more, how would it be if more people could get or receive that intensity mm -hmm. really is perhaps an energy that is required to bring out something, as we see in nature also. Yeah, your sharing of the birth of your first one brought me back to uh, the same <laughs> situation. 
And, you know, you learn in uh, the preparation classes that uh, labor takes about six hours. And I went into the hospital after the water broke and my contractions really started. And after an hour, I called the nurse and I said, okay, I need something because I wanted to do natural birthing. Mm -hmm. And so she said, okay, uh, let me check. And she said, no, you don't get anything. I'm calling the doctor. <laughs> yeah. so at that point, then I thought, okay, uh, because initially it was, I'm not going to do five more hours or six more hours or whatever of, of this, you know, that, that's not, oh, doesn't work for me. But when I heard that she's calling the doctor that I'm basically ready to go, I said, okay, I can deal with that. And isn't that interesting, Karina, that you mentioned it literally as you thinking giving up and you thinking I'm, I can't deal with it. And that is in a moment that birth already is started. Uh, yeah. 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 It yeah that's so beautiful. And the other thing is, I mean, right now, if I look outside, we have a snow cover because we started the new year with some decent snow. I mean, mostly we got a, a sprinkling of maybe a, a quarter or half an inch that was gone by the afternoon. But this time, A, we were for two days below freezing constantly and uh it was probably three four inches of what we actually got is snow cover so it looks like nothing is happening yet on some level i'm keenly aware that there is a lot happening underground as if the earth is getting ready for spring, which is just a few months away. And yes, on top, nothing happens. And how far is that also part of that whole new beginning in us? When we, uh, and even when we create, how much time goes in before that new product sees the light of day is being birthed. There is a so, lot of underground hidden work that is actually going on for all of us, no matter what it is. Exactly. There is a lot going on. And as you mentioned, it, it is covered up with the snow. And there we know we can see the snow and there is a knowing because we experienced it time after time after time that there will be a time that the snow is melting and disappears. And at the same time, that process is also going on in our daily life with creations, with wishes, with actualizations. And from the start, it looked looks like it is covered because we can't really see what's going on we because we don't want to perceive always we want to see the things mm -hmm. not perceive yeah. the things and and that is the the way i went now these holidays was hmm let me perceive let me be and let me perceive and learn from all those energies and really questioning for myself, where do I dismiss energies that are really creative, that are part of whatever is going on? Mm -hmm. Where do I avoid to be present with it as though I can say, yeah, not me. I didn't knew it. it you know, we use and, and we go with so many things as in the covering because we don't see it. But because we don't see it, we are not willing to perceive what is going on. 
Yeah. That's the energy I got from what you were telling and was similar with yeah. what I got during that week. Um, because, yeah, there was a lot going on and, and there was a lot creation going on, although it is not yet seen the light, if bird, but it is, it is coming, it is preparing. And I mean, for me, I, I'm having ideas and in order to even uh, implement them, there is a learning curve that I need to go through. There's certain questions where I've started to make a list and said, okay, you need to contact so-and-so and ask these questions, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll take time before any of that, those ideas actually show up visible exactly. for others. Yeah. Do you know what pinged me in this second, Karina? Was mm -hmm. when I hear the first time about the energy of fear is quite similar with the energy of excitement, mm -hmm. which when I explore it is true for me. Yeah. And now in this moment, it was also, yeah, but also here, intensity where we make intensity wrong is okay. also a similar energy of the excitement of what is coming, mm -hmm. of what is going on. Hmm. I want to put that one out because it refers to what uh, you just said is how often do we give up because we misinterpret the yes. energy oh yes as we <laughs> we did it so many times for sure oh <laughs> for sure and and it is that willingness to to be present that brings you the clarity that leads you to being and perceiving what is going on and being present for me lured me also to stay out of conclusion. That's one thing. And what that comment just triggered for me is how much is creation sort of like a birth process? There is the pregnancy where you may see because my belly is growing, you know, as pregnancy goes on. Yeah. But there is also the fact that I am feeding the baby, I am nourishing, I am contributing energy to the baby. And uh, so how much do we nourish ideas? And then at some point, we just say, oh, it's not happening. Uh, and we start with throwing the idea, which then is almost like I'm refusing to birth, which would kill exactly. the baby and which does kill the idea. And once the idea has its own life force, we still need to contribute, but it's in a different way than what we have been contributing up to that point. Yeah. And to stay even with your um, pregnancy example is also when you are pregnant, you know that you are nursing your baby, mm -hmm. but you don't know exactly how that is working. You know that you are eating and that you take rest and that you take exercise or whatever, but how it does really go inside of your belly, we don't have a clue. We can we know. look up. There is a knowing, but we don't have really a clue how that works. Mm -hmm. And is that also with that nourishing of that idea we have, how much more do we nourish the idea, the creation, 
where we also not really know of how exactly the process is going. Yeah. So that pregnancy is really a, 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 a way that, that helps me even more now to, to get clear of, yeah, how many times I thought I wasn't nourishing an idea. How many times that was that, oh yeah, that's an idea and I wrote it down or even not. And then it looks like it's not an ongoing thing. It's dropped. And then as a sudden, it comes in the front again. But then it isn't exactly the same because it is already nourished yeah. in some or another way. Wow. Yes. And how often do we kill uh, our ideas uh, just before the point of birth, so to speak? Because we come to, at least for me, that is true. I come to the conclusion, okay, it's been so long and nothing is coming off it. So just forget it. I'm, you know, barking up the wrong tree, going down the wrong path, whatever analogy I want to choose. But it's sort of like I'm aborting the birth. And this brings something <laughs> different again as when we are pregnant of our baby, aren't we willing to ask questions? Because there is such a force inside of us to keep the baby alive and to give it birth. And we will do everything. And we will ask questions and we will take actions because that child will, will be born whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. But do we the same? with creations? Do we ask things? Do we really take actions that is required to give truly bird? Hmm, I'm not sure of that. I would, my guess would be we ask initially questions, but then it's sort of like we go yeah. up and then it fades out and as it fades out we start abandoning it exactly we don't check in as with a pregnancy we, you yeah. check in yeah. during the process but so often we don't check in in the creation process it is starting and with questions and then we go on and on and on but we forget to check in is it still this is it still that what is required yes and the checking in happened in in the birth process because we have the visits with the gynecologist <laughs> yes maybe we need a gynecologist <laughs> of a different kind to birth our ideas somebody yeah. who helps us stay on track who allows us to you know, uh, continue to work and maybe even helps us pinpoint the uh, moment of birth, meaning when the idea is actually there and now requires a different kind of su sustenance. I mean, yes. uh, as long as the baby is in me, it's one thing, but then I need to start nursing it. Yes, And there is even, you know, my one of my experiences, it depends on what you eat. Yeah. They may not like the taste of the food that you have been eating that comes exactly. through the milk, hmm. you know, the breast exactly. milk. So yeah. how do we need to learn to stay with that example on what kind of energy contribution the idea now needs in yeah. order to be sustainable? And even the process can be with a pregnancy that the baby is rushing out and wants to, to, to be born as in a period that it is not really... <sighs> 
possible in a way to live independent as an early bird. And then we do also everything to nourish as it be yeah, giving the opportunity, the chance, the possibilities to the baby to grow even more. So it is gaining not solidity, but a force, a life force, a life force, yeah. a life force. And with creations, could it be that sometimes we are so excited and we will, we want to rush it through and then we <laughs> rush it through and it doesn't work because it didn't have enough life force yet. Yeah. So yeah, the pregnancy comparison, that idea is how much is that really going on in, in our daily life that we dismiss? And it is sometimes with a pregnant woman can ah, go relaxed because everything is smooth and flowing and going. But there are pregnancies that are really intense and that require a lot of nourishing and a lot of changes and a lot of whatever. Yeah. So where do we also conclude that when there was an idea that smoothly flowed out and saw the light and did grow mm -hmm. and nourished, that when there is another thing and it's not going the same way, how often do we conclude there? Oh, it it will not be the, the right idea or it's not the right time or whatever we conclude and then we put it aside. Yeah. Hmm. That's also something interesting. <laughs> and how much... Because you uh, address the, the differences in how a pregnancy evolves. For, like, I didn't have any morning sickness. Yeah. I even knew within two weeks that I was pregnant with my second one. And how many people have morning sickness? Yeah. And some have it lighter, some have it heavier. But what if those are the conclusions that each one of us has on how the birth of an idea of a product uh, is progressing. And if it is not according to those ideas, then again, we abandon it because it, exactly. it's and not that's right where, where doing something wrong. Exactly. And that is also where it comes in for me as be you do it your own way go with the flow as what works for you because yeah. with a pregnancy is it your body that is in the demand of how it goes and could it be that there the projections and expectations and and the curse and whatever are playing in to yeah to create even more difficulties as it is required sometimes. Yeah. So every birth is unique. Every child is unique. And every pregnancy is unique. Every process is unique. But are we willing to, to receive that for ourselves? So could it be also that we go in a similar way with creation, with the process for everything we want to give birth where it can be different and in that sense it's really are we willing to follow our knowing as we have to let the body during a pregnancy follow its knowing and yeah. not listen to, oh, you should be doing it that way and you should be doing it that way. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying do not listen, but 
do not make it the give it the significance that we often tend to give it. Yeah. Yeah. That are we willing to trust ourselves? And I know that that is a hard one because there's so often that I sit and so how would you deal with a situation with that kind of situation because I read something in the news or you know recently we had the fire in the Denver area so how would you deal with losing your house how would you deal with this that and the other and often I can't even imagine how I would deal but am I willing to trust myself that when I'm in a situation like that, I will know what to do. And that energy, that energy, Karina, if we are willing to be that energy every day, trusting ourselves mm -hmm. that we will know what to do, to act on every day, no matter what, if it is towers our body, towers relationships, towers the um, yeah, creation, whatever, are we willing to trust ourselves? Because truly, hmm, that's coming up now. If you if I have an idea, for example, and yes, I'm excited and I start to ask and the process is starting. But truly, I never asked how I would be with it, act on it, when it is truly happening already. As you mentioned, what would I do if I and my, my house burns off and I have no longer a home to stay in? How would I act? react or whatever and you can't even imagine it yeah which is true because it's too far out of the experience it is but isn't that similar with an idea a creation mm -hmm. because it is a creation so we can't even imagine how it will be we can perceive an energy but when we make that significant solid as in the conclusion that is really how it is meant to be how much do we dismiss there is that trusting or is that control <laughs> i i i think you just addressed the uh one of the big culprits and of humankind <laughs> is how much do we desire to be in control? Yes. And that can express itself in all kinds of different ways. Can I add something about that? Because you, you said in control. And for me, Karina, there is something around control that I became clear on. And the difference is, am I controlling when I'm controlling, then is it because I'm functioning not from the trust and towards everything outside mm -hmm. of me? Okay. But when I'm in control, then it is I'm present, I'm asking questions, I'm acting on it as though I perceive and I'm willing to receive and know and act. And that is for me in control not from force not from abuse not from conclusion not from but really from being present and and could it be that there that slightly difference with control messes up so often with our minds and yeah i i absolutely agree yes yeah and, and because, I, while you were talking, I could perceive uh, the, the difference in energy yes. of control and control, being yes. controlled and controlling. 
exactly. Controlling is more the doing, doing, doing as yeah. everything outside. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to fit into this box that I have prepared yeah. for you. Yes. Yeah. Control is really, as you said, an all around. You are part of the control. You are controlling yeah. yourself in a way by choosing to trust what you know yeah yeah trusting trusting yourself trusting your knowing trusting that you know what to yeah. do what to say how to act on and that is the true natural in control, control. Yeah. being in control being that control yeah wow yeah and that is similar also with that intensity where we started from is when we are willing to be in control then the intensity is the excitement part because yeah. that is the movement that makes everything going so intensity in a way is a more intense moving energy required to go on. Yeah. 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 And, and when we want to control that, not being in control, but doing control, that is where intensity is affecting us, is controlling us. Can mm. become negative, yeah. That it's too much. Yeah. Could, and how how far does it become too much by us not being willing to flow with the energy, exactly. to move, and yeah. to shift and to change as things develop? Yeah. Yeah. And, and even what, what comes up now is during the process of letting go, that doing control, letting go of judgments, letting go of yeah control. expectations, yeah. all those things that has me, that controlling me, often, often there was quite a bit intensity in my world but exactly also in my body as my body pushed it also out all yeah where it was mm. where i hoarded it and kept it secret and kept it safe and then allowing my body to move it that movement of pulling it out was also often an intensity and i I can remember the moments I made that intensity wrong as making my body wrong. For, is this really necessarily? Because I made my body wrong and I couldn't be present with, oh, but that's the movement my body requires. Because that's something I asked finally my body to do, to let go of. And then I made it wrong. So then that were the moments that intensity stayed longer and and became even more. Intense. I was really in effect of it, yeah. where otherwise, when I chose to be present with it and perceiving and acknowledging, wow, magic body, wow, the force my body had to move the things through. But then it went so much quicker it's not easy but it was more ease and quicker yeah as with and your bird with your child it was also quick and ease yes and i went to the wrong conclusion that since yeah. normally one says this is the second one is faster than the first one so I figured the second one is going to be faster. Yeah, nice <laughs> thought. 
<laughs> we are so good in oh, taking on okay. conclusions and definitions and then we we make the whole story around it and then yeah we can compare the stories and then we can go on the ladder of mm, better less worse yeah. whatever <laughs> Oh, wow. we are such funny creatures, huh? Yeah. But the insanity of, of this, because we are laughing, and it is to laugh, to, to laugh it's, with it's it. It's laughable, yeah. But it is an in, in, in insanity, as in all those choices, we, we can't even receive not one second, no, not one person of the magic and the truly unique way our bodies are with us, that nature is, that earth is, that life is. We dismiss so many things in that insanity. And how much are we creating out of that insanity that then doesn't make any sense. Oh, yes, also. I mean, I remember with the second one coming from the conclusion that it's going to be faster and I was further away from the hospital. So I started contraction. They got sort of regular and I said, OK, let's go moment I was in the hospital, I relaxed. The contractions were further apart. They said, okay, go for a walk. I, we did. Contractions came closer together. Okay, let's get back to the hospital. Relax. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I really, you know, I get it how crazy on some level we can be. We can, we can. And uh, are and we going to look at that? Even? Exactly, because sincerely, uh, Corina, I chose, yeah, a longer time ago, that I would have fun when I become clear uh, about this insanities I'm choosing, because it, it doesn't change anything when you, yeah. swirl down and hit on your own head as oh how oh, stupid it is stupidity yes it is in insanity but hey now now i know now i can acknowledge it how would it be that i receive it and receive it with joy and what can i choose now different and you know, I mean, even just the simple ability to being able to laugh at yourself. Yeah. Or, you know, everything is so dead serious. We have to be adults. Oh, adult, yes. You yes. know, a child can laugh at, the, at themselves, but we need to know as adults of how things go and how the world works, and we need to be serious. And even that, Karina, is that still true that a child can laugh with it, with himself? Uh, <laughs> let's say it definitely used to be. It used to be, uh, exactly. I, I, I would agree, especially in today's time, I'm not so sure how much children still can laugh. Exactly. Can even just laugh. Yeah. And it was easy laughter for, for children. I mean, something hit them so funny. They saw the craziness, stupidity, weirdness, or however you want to call it, and laughed at it uh, and didn't take it serious. And this brings me, Karina, <laughs> the last weekend, uh, I was with, with um, a couple of friends and in a certain time, she said to me, ah, you and your partner, you are laughing so much and easily. And I thought, yes, we do laugh a lot. Every day we, we, we laugh at least once. And laughing is really with, with yeah, with 
what we are saying, doing, choosing, whatever. But it catched at me that I thought, wow, it's an adult. And she is really open. It's not a person who is really serious with, with everything. She has a lot of humor herself. Noticing the laughter we, my partner and me, have, it did ring a bell, like, wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And it was also time for me to acknowledge even more that I am choosing, that we together choose different. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, what would it take for everyone to choose laughter? More yeah. laughter. More, more laughter, more joy. The earth would love it. The earth would love it. You know, and and I've heard it. And even when, yes, Sorry, go. you finish. <laughs> yeah, it is with my partner. We we choose laughter, and it's not that we are looking always in the same direction, or he's creating from a really smaller place than I am choosing. But nevertheless, it is that allowance that of what he is choosing, he allows me, he's in allowance from what I'm choosing, and we can still choose laughter together. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. The intensity. Yes. <laughs> And, and even with intensity, a good laughter, how much takes it out the intensity also and goes into the relaxation. Agreed. And how much do people consider laughter an intensity? Oh, and a trap. Wow, yes. You know? Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> this had a lot of energy, Karina. <laughs> really perceiving a, a huge heaviness. It, it hit me, so to speak. <laughs> wow. As it, as it did a, a trap nearly, you can't be that joyful. Yeah. That's accordingly with... <laughs> Wow. Yeah. Yes, but nevertheless, I'm choosing it still. And I'm choosing it too. And both of us are choosing something new. Yes. Which we start next week. Having on Thursday an expanded look at what Tuesday's theme is. And we don't know yet what Tuesday's theme is. I will post as usual on Monday after our conversation what we're going to talk about. Yes. And uh, there, maybe we'll put the link to register for the uh, Thursday on yeah. Monday already. And yeah. then put it again on Tuesday. So yes. people have to, Good idea. To, to get it. But uh, let's see what that creates. Yes. And for more clarity, it will also go with the Facebook Lives. We will shorten them up. So it's more like the Facebook Live is the te teaser, and then we go into, into more in-depth. We throw out some ideas on Tuesday and explore the ideas on Thursday. Yes. <laughs> Let's go for it. <laughs> Okay, Karina, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody else. And also. Exactly. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.